cybersecurity firm just found a hidden backdoor in mass market Bluetooth devices. So are Bluetooth devices now at risk? So this company, TarLogic, that tests Bluetooth devices, showed up and said that Espressif's ESP32 chip, which are really popular chips, has this backdoor they found. And they said, that's oh, a really big deal. It's a Internet of Things chip. It's a little cheap chip, like two bucks. You will find this inside smart light bulbs, smart light switches, thermostats, smart dehumidifiers, and smart badges for conferences. Lots and lots of the hobbyist kits where you can, you know, program up your own little toy robot or whatever will have ESP32 chips in them. They're very popular. In fact, Spressif says they've sold one billion of these chips now. They're neat chips. They've got Bluetooth. They've got Wi-Fi. Fine, they've got this little CPU. It's not very fast. So what's a backdoor? A backdoor is when there's a secret way to come in and take control of a device or a piece of software that the owner of the software doesn't know. Right? It's a secret way in. So what TarLogic found here was that if you set the thing up in Bluetooth chip mode where it was connected to another CPU and said, hey, you can use my Bluetooth, that there are secret commands you can send it on top of the standard ones for Bluetooth chips. There's a standard called HCI which has all these commands you can send to Bluetooth chips. Well, there are a couple secret ones that let you read the memory on the chip, write the memory on the chip, change the MAC address, the serial number of the chip. So how dangerous is this backdoor? This one's greatly exaggerated. And they're meant as debugging tools. So you can come in, if there's a problem with software on the chip, you can read what's on the memory. And you know, if you think you found a bug, you can try to fix it. It's not really some huge secret backdoor to take control. After all, it's only accessible by the chip that's connected to it. These are not commands you can send wirelessly on Bluetooth, right? I mean, that would be the horrifying thing if you could just attack someone with Bluetooth. And they found problems like that in Bluetooth chips before, but that's not what we're talking about, right? The whole wireless interface is fine. So you can come in on the wired interface and you can send these weird commands to read and write memory, which means if you had complete control, you could like write different software. You could do a software upgrade to some evil software on the Bluetooth so that after that it would accept wireless commands to do bad things on your computer. But to get to that point, they have to already control your CPU. So if somebody seized control, you know, if a virus or something has gotten root permission and taken over your CPU, it can do bad things. But it's already taken over your computer. It can do bad things with or without the Bluetooth chip. So it's almost too late to call it a vulnerability. Are you saying it's only a problem if your device is already compromised? That is what I'm saying. And there are particular bits of nastiness to this, right? And that it installs new software on Bluetooth chip. And when you come with your antivirus and clean out your CPU, you may not reinstall the drivers. And so the bad software might still be sitting here out on this peripheral ready to come back. So without some other weaknesses chained together. It's kind of a nothing burger. So Espressif, the maker of the ESP32, has denied that this is a backdoor. They say there is no problem, but they are going to do a software update that removes these commands anyway. They just don't need the bad press, right? So they're going to take all of them out, and that will be that. Sounds like it's not a big deal. That's my thinking. But, you know, by itself, it doesn't sound scary at all. I mean, you have to be on the bus. You have to be controlling the CPU to do anything. But sometimes you can take what seems like a very small security problem. And then you'll find another one, perhaps in the CPU, that doesn't sound like a big deal. And then another one in the operating system that doesn't seem like a, a big deal either. And then you string three of these together into the hack that nobody saw coming. I mean, some of the specter type attacks, when I first read about it, I didn't think you could make a practical attack in JavaScript in a web page. People did. They run code in the browser and managed to find the secrets on your CPU. At first read, I didn't think it was a big deal. I was wrong. Make sure you subscribe for more tech discussions like this one.